Here, friends, are some words from Scripture familiar to many of us and which contain good news for those who have never heard them before. From John's revelation, hear these words. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her spouse. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them. They will be God's peoples. And God will be with them and be their God. God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. And added, Write this. For these words are trustworthy and true. And that one continued, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. May God bless the hearing of this word. Will you join your hearts with mine in prayer? Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we continue to give you thanks for the gift of this day. And we ask, O God, that in this time of worship that you would speak either through me or in spite of me, but that above all else we would hear with clarity what it is that you say to us this day. All of this we trust and we ask in your many names. Amen. On January 20th, 2016, after serving as your associate minister for just over two years, 98% of you elected me to become your senior minister, an office in which I took the following month following my predecessor, Reverend Dr. Ron Patterson's retirement. That vote took place at our annual meeting that year and after I preached that morning. My sermon that morning began this way. There are really only two kinds of people in the world. People who love cats (laughs) and everyone else. Bill was one of the latter category He did not like cats, but he did like his next door neighbor, the little girl who lived there. When she came to his door one day and knocked in tears and was, he was very worried about her. Honey, what's wrong? My cat has climbed up in a tree in your backyard and won't come down. Well, I'll help you, honey, he said, thinking, stupid cat. (laughs) They went, and sure enough, the cat had climbed to the very top of a tall, young tree that Bill had planted about a year before, a sapling, really. And they called up to the stupid cat, And the cat was holding on for dear life and wouldn't move. Then Bill called to his wife, Jane, and she opened a can of tuna. Here, kitty, here. Uh, Nothing happened. And Bill said to his spouse, well, you know, it's such a slender tree. If... I just pulled down, I bet we can grab hold of the cat. 
And so he did. He grabbed the tree and hand over hand began to pull the sapling over. And as the tree was arching, Jane was on her tiptoes trying to get the cat. And she almost had it. Bill didn't mean to do it. Somehow he lost his grip. The tree whipped back and sent the cat sailing into space, never to be seen again. And Bill and Jane began to console the little neighbor, and she went home heartbroken. And Bill thought, well, that's the end of that. But the very next day, Bill was in the grocery store and bumped into one of the neighbors in the neighborhood who happened to live right behind them. And in her grocery cart were cans of cat food, (laughs) a little collar, and a catnip mouse. And Bill said, why, Doris, I didn't know that you and Jim had a cat. We didn't. But the oddest thing happened yesterday. (laughs) We were in the backyard and this cat came flying out of the air and landed at our feet. (laughs) And Jim said to me, look, Doris, the Lord sent us a cat. (laughs) My friends... You and I are like the cats. God is sending us into unknown places and unknown futures. But I believe that we are ready. So I will continue to say what I have said and what I have written, but yet keep getting asked. No, I don't know what's next. The movers arrive in the morning, and hopefully all of my stuff will be packed by then. I will return to my native Texas for the time being. And I had the most wonderful experience on Friday night while eating dinner with my parents after they arrived My oldest niece knew that her grandparents were visiting her Uncle Dawson. She text messaged me to tell me that she was in a play at her middle school. She gave me the two dates that it would be performed and asked if I could attend. And for the first time in her 12-year-old life, I didn't have to check my calendar or book a flight. I could immediately say, yes, I will be there. So those are some of the moments that I will look forward to in the short term. Spending time with family, with my five nieces and nephews, with a little rest and with some renewal. Ministry under the most normal circumstances at best is exhausting. In a global pandemic, let's just say they will be doing sociological studies about that for years to come. I will continue job searches, discernment about the future, And we will find appropriate communication strategies to let you know what is next for me. But what I know is that I feel like the cat in that story. God is about to launch me into something and I feel confident that it will be exhilarating and yet scary all at the same time. Just as you as a congregation are preparing for your 50th anniversary next March, you have exceeded every 
imaginable thing that a church can go through in 50 years. Statistically, so many churches never make it to 50 years. So there will be much to celebrate, much to anticipate, and yet much to work for. And I know that David and Angela will lead you faithfully and well as you look to a bright future, as God pulls you back and prepares to launch you into the next 50 years. One of the most empowering situations I ever experienced in my ministry here was while I was still associate minister. My predecessor once said to me in a private meeting that he believed that some of the best and biggest and boldest ideas for this congregation rested within me and challenged me to think and to reflect and to share those ideas with him and with the various ministries and leaders among us. And so I began to do that. I began to share and to think and to reflect. And one day, as I began to share one of those ideas about the future of this great church. It was a former lay leader, looked across the table at me and said very, shall we say, directly, Dawson, your dreams are dangerous. And I thought for a moment and responded, I can't think of a more faithful compliment in all of my life. And so as I prepare to take leave, that will become my prayer and hope for this church. That this will be a church of dangerous dreams. Because just as John, in the reading for this morning, has these fantastic images of God, it is my hope that there will be fantastic images of a future for this church, filled with bold ideas of what the future looks like. Because there will be many people and experts and others who will tell you about how the church of the future is in danger and is in decline and can fail. But I believe that this church has a bold and faithful future ahead filled with dreams. Some of them may be even a little dangerous. Later that day in January of 2016, I finished my sermon and said this, There are many places in this world today eager to tell you who is in and who is out. There are political figures of both major parties who want to tell you who to blame and who to be afraid of. But we are called to be a church, to be a vision of a world where all are welcomed where all people are invited to live in peace and to be celebrated. And so, let us continue to live into that dream and into that vision. 
can you begin to feel the tree rocking beneath you? Because my friends, God is about to launch us into the next great calling. Are you ready? Because I know I am. Thanks be to God.